Hey guys, Scott here. This cat has fucked up this video three times. <laughs> uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the strength of holding W in Dead by Daylight. And this is something I don't think people really fully understand. And uh, it is not a ploy to get people to stop looping and just run in straight lines and be idiots. This is actually something I think people don't fully grasp how... Not little, but how... Uh, I guess how little, how little the speed difference between survivor and killer actually matters when there is no opportunity to cut the survivor off. And I kind of want to exemplify why this makes maps like Midwitch and Haddonfield so unbelievably boring and terrible to play on. So first let's go over the actual speeds. Uh, survivors run at 4 meters a second, killers run at 4.6 meters a second, or most of the killers run at 4.6 meters a second. Some of them that have special movement abilities move a bit slower at like 4.4. But for the purposes of the argument, let's say everyone runs at 4.6. So that's a 15% difference. And that may kind of seem like a lot. But when you think about just running in a straight line, if you have a survivor and a killer and they just run in a straight line, it takes so long for the killer to get a, a, a sizable advantage. And the reverse is true of the killer catching up with the survivor. And this is why I think people don't understand how strong just running straight is a lot of the time. So I think survivors... Survivors think killers are faster than they actually are because they have a lot of very in-your-face examples of the killer being uh, fast. For example, the survivor might be able to get around a loop three times in 10 seconds where the killer can do it like in, you know, eight seconds or something like that. So, although it's not that big of a difference, it seems like it because it's an entire loop that the survivor can't do because they're being outsped by the killer. Depending on the hitbox of the, of the loop, obviously sometimes the hitboxes uh, actually benefit the survivor, but... Most jungle gyms, things like that, are very clear standard hitboxes, and, you know, the killer can get around it a lot faster than the survivor can, so it's a very in-your-face example that, oh my god, this guy is way faster than me. Another example is, like, if you have a survivor on the other end of a map, and you have a killer here, you know, and the survivor sees the killer's coming, he starts running this way, the killer doesn't just go like this and then like this, the killer can cut him off, and that's where the diagonal is always going to be faster than, you know, just running in a straight line. So the killer can close the distance a lot faster than the survivor can because the survivor can't, you know, the survivor can't cut off a killer because he, he's being chased by the killer. So only the killer can cut off the survivor. So that makes it seem like the killer is a lot faster as well because they have that, they have that diagonal that the survivor can't do. Now, to actually bring it into the holding W thing, I don't think people realize how strong just running straight is a lot of the time. How many times have you seen this example where a survivor, like, is about to get hit and they try to spin or something like that and then you hit them and then as you hit them, they're using half their speed burst to just keep spinning or doing something and then they're only, like, 10 meters away and you get them again in, you know, 15 seconds, 10-15 seconds, something like that. People, uh, one of the signs, I think, of a very good survivor is very effectively planning your speed burst. The speed burst is when you get hit, you move at 150% movement speed for two seconds. It's a huge, it's like sprint burst, but for two seconds instead of three. It's a huge speed. So good survivors know when they're about to get hit and they plan for it and they see exactly where they're going to go and they, they run as straight as possible to where they want to go. Any zigzagging of any kind cuts your distance gain by so, so much. And I love when people do that when I'm playing killer because they end up gaining like no distance. But the good survivors I go against, they know they, they just go straight as possible. And if they do that, if they go as straight as possible, they will gain between 16 and 18 meters of distance before the killer can begin moving to catch them again, assuming no save the best for last. So, that seems like, oh, it's only 16, 18 meters. That's not that big of a deal. The killer moves pretty fast. Yeah, but the survivor also kind of moves, you know, a, almost a similar speed. So, when one thing is not moving, it's not a big deal. If a survivor's working on a generator and they're 16 meters away, it takes less than four seconds to get there. That's not a big deal. However, if the survivor is, you know, moving away, that, you know, zero movement that they had on working on a gen is now four meters a second. So you now have a catch up speed of 0.6 meters a second. So if the survivor gets 16 to 18 meters away, how long do you think it takes to catch up just holding W? Well, it takes like 22 seconds to get even just in lunge range, not even like melee, just to get into lunge range. And you can figure that math out pretty simply because after 20 seconds, the survivor will have traveled 80 meters. The killer will have traveled 92 meters. 92 minus 80 is 12. The 16 meters of distance that they gained minus the 12 equals 4. So that 
means after 20 seconds, the killer is four meters away. I'm not sure exactly which, what the lunge distance is, depending on latency. It's anywhere between zero and 16,000 meters. So, but it, it, the point is, a bad survivor actually can get more use out of just holding W in a straight line than going to a loop. And this is something that I think a lot of people don't understand. Like, I, I always say there is absolutely a skill cap to survivor. People always like bitch at me in comments saying, oh my God, you're saying, you're saying survivor takes skill. Survivor takes no skill. Just run a pallet and drop it. It's not true. There's absolutely a skill in a survivor. And it is knowing how to maximize distance as much as possible. That is the entire skill of survivor. It all boils down to knowing how to maximize distance as much as possible. Whereas like a lesser survivor might get hit and, you know, kind of like speed burst to a pallet loop or something like that and then try, you know, looping in that area, a good survivor will realize it's going to take this killer 20 seconds to catch up to me, even if I run straight. So I'm going to run straight for 18 seconds and then get to another loop and then start the whole looping process. Whereas a bad survivor might just run to a loop and start the looping process. They might even loop the same amount of time, but the good survivor is smart enough to realize that the killer can't hit them for another 18 seconds. And no, longer than that, actually. And so... That, I think, is one of the examples of what separates good survivors from bad survivors, proving that there is a skill cap to survivors. It might not be as much as, like, you know, learning, like, nurse or, I don't know, like a, a good billy or huntress or something like that, but there is definitely a skill cap to it. And this kind of brings me to, um, well, let's go over, like, examples, actually. So, decisive strike is an example. Five seconds done. One second of it is spent jumping off the shoulder, so... That means the killer is stunned for four seconds effectively as you're running away. That's going to be 16 meters of distance, which, same example. That's over 20 seconds it takes the killer to catch up, assuming they just run straight and do nothing. Now, a smart survivor is going to run straight for 14 of those seconds and use the last two to get into a, like a vault or a window loop or something like that, and then begin looping. And that gains you so, so much time. And this really kind of shows you why Midwitch, I think, is probably the worst map they've made i'm not sure if ever it's un inarguably the, the most boring map they made i don't know about in terms of balance it's probably fine but it's the most boring map they've ever made and the reason is midwitch is the only map in the game where the entire map has no options to cut the survivor off the only reason that killers are not so heavily affected by the strength of just holding w is because on most maps, you can't just indefinitely hold W. You eventually have to turn, or you hit a corner, or there's a wall, or there's a tree, or there's something in the way to make it so you can't just keep running straight. That's why in that scenario, where I said earlier, if the survivor's here, and then the killer's here, the killer's not just going to run in a straight line and follow the path of the survivor. It's going to take him 40 seconds to catch up. What the killer's going to do is cut the survivor off right here. And then that cuts the time significantly, so it's not so bad. And that's why this problem is not that widely known or widespread. However, Midwitch, the entire map cannot be cut off in any way. So, if you see a survivor right here, and what was that? See a survivor right here at the other end of one of the giant hallways, right? And then the killer's right here. So, that 16 meters, like here to here, that's like 16 meters that you get from a speed burst or a decisive strike or something like that. This is like 40 or 50 meters. You know how much longer it takes to catch up with this? This takes, like, minutes. It takes so fucking long to catch up with the killer. By that time, the game's basically over. That's why I've said, if you have object of obsession on that map, you pretty much can never die. Because you will always be at the opposite end, and the killer can only just hold W for, like, over a minute to catch up to you. And that's why the design of the map is so bad. The killer's... The whole speed advantage of the killer is not the speed advantage. It's not the speed difference. It's, it's the killer's ability to cut the survivor off because the killer is doing the chasing. The survivor can't cut the killer off. Only the killer can cut the survivor off. And that is where the huge speed difference is. On Midwitch, you can't cut anybody off ever. So all you can do to catch up with people, even if you see them teabagging at the other end of the map, you can't do anything but just hold W. There's no mind gaming it. There's nothing you can do. You just have to spend over a minute catching up to that survivor. And that is why the map is absolute garbage. And that is why people hate Haddonfield too. It's another map that everyone like hates. And that's because 
Haddonfield has these giant fences that are basically midwitch in smaller amounts. You've all seen those giant fences that occupy the entire house and it goes all the way up to the street. So again, if you see the survivor at one end of the fence and the killers at the other, this is this this is the chase. This is all they do. Over and over again. For over a minute. This is all they do. Until they eventually finally catch up. And that's terrible design. The killer needs to always be able to cut the survivor off. That's where the fun is. Like when you're in that scenario and you get like, you know, like the, the, the survivor's here and the killer's here and they're running this way and you're going to cut them off. This is the fun part right here. This is where the survivor goes, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to juke him. He gets out of line of sight. I go this way. Killer runs this way. Oh shit. Now the killer's got to catch back up or the killer, you know, fakes it, moonwalks it and then turns back. That's where all like the actual interesting dynamic gameplay is in that meetup moment where the cutoff is complete. And you have maps like Haddonfield and Badham Preschool. You basically... I guess Badham too. Badham has those fences. I don't know why I said Badham. They're both schools, I guess. Um, Haddonfield and Midwich. You have these scenarios where you can't cut off anymore. And that means everyone's just holding W and everyone's miserable. So that is kind of what I mean by the strength of... Uh, the strength of W. Holding W is insanely strong when used in the right scenario. And, and one of the... Key aspects of learning how to be a better survivor is learning how to control your speed burst and learning how to gain as much distance as possible before you start looping. Because once you loop, the distance doesn't really matter anymore because you're starting like, you know, like a, it, it's like a, a standard protocol, which you do in a loop kind of thing. There's still mind games and stuff there, but, you know, once you vault that window, you've sh uh, you shake up the dynamic of just chasing in a straight line. So knowing how to gain as much distance as possible and then looping is such a huge difference than just getting your speed burst to a loop immediately. And that's why I think people need to realize how strong just holding W is because, you know, taking 20 seconds to catch up after just hitting somebody once is a very, very long time. I honestly think, I, I thought about doing an experiment, but I realized I don't care enough to test it. I wanted to do an experiment with like a, a deep pip squad style gameplay where you just rush gens as fast as possible, but nobody uses a single pallet or a window or anything. Nobody uses any resources on the map. Everyone just holds W as long as possible. And I think you could easily beat killers like Wraith or Clown or Doctor, anyone that has to hit you twice. Killers like Billy and stuff like that, obviously they can just M1 you and then, or I'm sorry, they can just chainsaw you and then you're not going to last. But any killer that has to hit you twice, I, I am very sure with a good team, you can win by not using a single resource. As long as you heal up, and make it so you have to get hit two times every time. You can waste like 40 seconds of the killer's time just holding W per down. And you can easily win the game like that. So do I think this is a problem? I, I, I've always thought that the wiping animation should be shortened um, from like three to two seconds. Because I, to me personally, the, the fun in the chase is, you know, the interactions at, at loops and stuff like that. Moonwalking and mind gaming and things like that. That's where I think a lot of the fun of the game comes from. That's where a lot of the skill of the game comes from. And I think that's what should be uh, emphasized more. Holding W is just as boring as holding M1 on a gen. And the more time you're spent wiping, the le uh, you know, the more distance they gain, the more time you're just spent holding W to catch back up. So I've always thought the, the wiping animation should be shortened a little bit, maybe from like three to two seconds or something like that. Obviously, say the best or last would have to be nerfed to compensate. But um, it'd be the same thing they did with like Brutal Strength nerfing... Uh, you know, nerfing brutal strength, but increasing the base pallet kick speed. I always thought that'd be good for the game because it encourages people to actually do the uh, the interactive part and not to just bash my face on the keyboard, hold W part. But that's just a random spitball idea. I haven't given it much thought. But that is it, guys. Uh, that is the strength of holding W. I uh, hope you guys kind of realize what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not just saying just hold, hold W and not do anything. Uh, or do that when I'm playing killer. That'd be great. But um, yeah, that is it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm curious what you think about the... Uh, the topic, I guess.